All right, welcome to episode three of the Amplifier Project. In this episode, we will finish the amplifier. There is just one remaining issue to address. So I've actually been using the amplifier for a few months, and basically it's much too quiet when it amplifies the sound coming from the output of the computer. Basically the signal level that is generated by the computer's line out is much too low to produce reasonable volumes when fed in directly into the LM1875 amplifier module. So as a, a way of solving this problem, we are going to add a pre-amplifier and specifically we will add the John Audiotech stereo preamp and there is a link to his video about this preamplifier in the video description for this video so that should boost the signal levels and allow us to get reasonable volumes out of the amplifier modules once we've got that working I'll give you a final overview of the completed amplifier including the enclosure and offer a few final thoughts and conclusions and we will be printing some mounting brackets uh, using a 3D printer and the models for those mounting brackets are also linked from the video description. Okay, let's get started. All right, so here is the finished and constructed John Audio Tech pre-amplifier circuit that I have assembled on this little proto board. The audio input comes in here on this screw terminal. These screw terminals provide the amplified audio output to the amplifier modules. This is the input for the split rail power that powers the preamplifier. I have tried to follow uh, John Audio Tech's recommendations for, uh, for layout, and I have not tested this yet, so uh, I'm hoping that it will work when I actually put it into the amplifier. So I guess the next thing to do is test it out. All right, so before I can install the preamplifier, I need to deal with one problem, which is that the power supply board only has two sets of screw terminals providing split rail power. Originally, I thought that was all I would need because I would just have the two uh, amplifier modules in here, but now I have the two amplifier modules and the preamp, all of which uh, need both the positive and negative supply voltages. And so uh, basically what I did is I wired up this little adapter that splits the split rail power uh, into two separate sets of wires, one going to each amplifier module. And so right now I just want to make sure that the amplifier uh, still works. So uh, here's some royalty free music. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that, that works great. Uh, it's definitely coming out of both speakers. Uh, it's super loud. So uh, this is, of course, my little uh, MP3 player that produces much louder sound than the uh, my sound card on my computer, which, hence the need for the preamp. So, okay, this is good. Now I just need to uh, wire in the preamplifier and see if that works. All right, here is the preamplifier wired into the amplifier. So this time the audio is coming in from the computer. I looked at the incoming audio signal from the computer on the oscilloscope and it's about 100 millivolts peak to peak. So it's a pretty weak signal coming out of the audio output from, from the sound card. That comes into the, the volume potentiometer and then goes into the input of the preamp. Get The signals get boosted to the left and right channels that go into the two amplifier modules. So let's play some royalty free music. I have the volume knob all the way down, so let's start the music playing. Okay, music is playing, let's turn it up a little bit. All right, so even with just a tiny increase in the volume on the, uh, in terms of turning the volume knob, the volume is already pretty good, so I'll turn it up a little bit more. Uh, at this point, it's pretty loud. It's probably as loud as my voice. I could make it much, much louder. Uh, and in fact, I have turned it up pretty loud playing other music and it, it the volume is quite good and in fact I have not noticed any noticeable distortion even at high volumes so I think we're getting pretty good power out of these two amplifier modules now that the now that the signal has been boosted to a reasonable level so I would count this as a complete success it really addresses the problem that I had with the the low output volume. So I'm really satisfied and pleased with how well this this uh, this preamplifier works. Uh, I would consider this a tremendous success. At this point, really all we need to do to finish the amplifier is to find a way to physically, mechanically mount the preamplifier module into the enclosure. And I think what I am going to try is to 3D print some little brackets 
that I can use to mount this uh, this PCB on. So, all right, so let's see if we can't uh, design something reasonable that we can 3D print. Okay, so here we are in OpenSCAD. So this is the little bracket design that I came up with and it, it's nothing too fancy, but it should get the job done. So this part will mount against the bottom of the enclosure. I have a couple of holes here that I'm gonna put some wood screws in. The PCB sits on top here and there are screw holes um, sized and positioned appropriately for the proto board, which needs M2 screws. And I've used one of the standard techniques for fastening the screws to the bracket by putting in a recess uh, under each screw screw hole that's the exact shape of a nut, in this case an M2 nut, so that should allow the screws to hold the PCB securely against the bracket. Okay, so I will export this to STL and I will slice it. I use Cura for slicing and we'll print this thing on the printer. So here's one of the printed brackets. I think it turned out pretty nicely. Um, this is actually without any finishing. Um, there weren't really any strings or other uh, uh, other things that need to be cleaned up. Uh, it's, uh, you know, th this is obviously not mechanically the, the, the strongest design, but it's gonna be plenty strong. Uh, actually, there's a little string there. This is going to be plenty strong for just holding the, uh, the preamp proto board in place. Uh, okay, so uh, let's get this mounted in the uh, amplifier enclosure. All right, so here is the pre-amplifier in the enclosure mounted on the brackets, and that is nice and secure. That is not going anywhere. Let's just do one final check to make sure that it still works by playing some music. It does indeed work. All right, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it for this project in terms of the uh, assembly, all I need to do is put the lid back on and then uh, we'll recap and see where we ended up. Before we wrap up, let's take one last look at the finished amplifier. The front panel is clear acrylic and has a red power LED and, of course, a 10K stereo audio potentiometer to serve as the volume control. Heat sinks for the amplifier modules and voltage regulators are mounted on the sides of the enclosure. I tapped 440 screw holes into the heat sinks to fasten the components and used insulated thermal pads to avoid electrically connecting the components to the heat sinks. The back panel is clear acrylic and has the audio input, speaker terminals, IEC power input, fuse holder, and power switch. I was able to drill holes for all of the components except for the IEC connector, which required cutting using a Dremel tool. Here's one last shot showing the inside of the enclosure. It's not beautiful, but I'm satisfied with the way it turned out. The amplifier is mounted on a shelf above my bench. The top cover is a piece of thin plywood and provides a location to store some prototyping supplies. All right, so here are my final thoughts on the project, and I'll talk about what I think went well and what I think could have gone better. So what went well are the electronics and the performance and sound quality totally exceed my expectations. The entire setup sounds fantastic, so I'm very happy with how that turned out. In terms of the things that could have gone better, I definitely spent more money than I thought I would or that I wanted to originally. I was able to do a lot of this with parts I had on hand, but I did wind up having to buy some components for the preamp. I definitely splurged on the Minimus 7 speakers, although I really like them and they're awesome. One Another thing that I would say was the largest source of pain in this project is making enclosures is is difficult and it's not something I'm naturally good at. I think it turned out okay. There are um, things I would do differently in the future, but overall, you know, it was fine. So would I recommend to other people to try a project like this for themselves? And emphatically, I would say yes. Uh, I think this was definitely a good idea. It was a great learning experience. And one of the things that's really cool about this amplifier is that if I ever want to fix it or upgrade it or make changes to it in the future, I absolutely know how to do that. And that's not something you can say about a lot of consumer electronics. So that's a, that's that's neat. I'm, I'm glad I did this. Uh, okay, so that's it for this video and for this project. So I will see you in the next video.